Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate these effects from Dune. A couple weeks ago, the movie Dune released, and it was the biggest spectacle I've experienced in a theater in a long time, and that was in big part due to the effects done by DNEG. I thought they were incredible, and the whole time I was wondering if I, as a film student with 800 subscribers, could pull them off myself. The three effects I chose were the heat mirage effect, the blue eyes for the Freemans, and this energy shield effect used in the combat scenes. The heat mirage effect will require the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot, but all the other effects can be done entirely inside of After Effects. First, let's break down the heat mirage. I'm not sure if this was practically done or a visual effect, but if like me you can't afford to drive out with the cast and crew to the desert in 100 degree heat, this could be an alternative. The way we shot this was locked down on a tripod and zoomed in as much as we could. Heat mirages on camera, and especially in the film Dune, are commonly caught on telephoto lenses. That's a lens that zooms in a crap ton and really compresses the image. My lens does not zoom in as much as the ones used in the movies, but I made the best out of what I had. Now, with your footage open in After Effects, the first thing I'm going to do to help this effect of a telephoto lens and a heat mirage is really blur any part of the background that is super far off in the distance. To do that, I'm going to duplicate the base layer, add a Gaussian blur, set the blurriness to 15, Check repeat edge pixels, go up to layer, new, solid, and create a black solid over this. I'm going to turn off visibility on the black layer, and with it selected, draw a mask around the whole section beyond the building, making sure it's set to add. Then I'm going to bring up the feather options and set those to 5. I'll turn back on visibility for the black layer and set the track mat on the layer below to alpha. This allows only what's black in the layer above to be visible in the layer below. Now, I'm going to duplicate the base layer again and bring this above all the other layers. This is going to be the Mirage. I'm going to grab this top middle square and drag it down until the image is flipped. Then I'm going to grab the mask tool and draw out shapes as such along the bottom of the frame, closer to the camera than the talon is. I'm also going to mask it to slant up the hill, matching the curvature of the ground. I'm going to set the feather for these to 10. I also want Alex to briefly be reflected in the Mirage, so using the Pan Behind tool, I can move what's shown in the mask without moving the mask itself. Once I'm happy with that, add a Gaussian Blur and set this to 15.8. Then add Turbulent Displacement, set the amount to 166, the size to 4, the complexity to 1, and the evolution to 1 by 119.6 degrees. This is your Mirage effect. Now, onto the heat ripples in the air. I'm going to create a new layer, which will be our blur layer. Add a Gaussian blur and set the blurriness to 5. Check repeat edge pixels and then draw a mask so that the portion of the ground extending towards the camera is left clear. Then, using the feather tool, I'll expand the edge to feather out towards the bottom, giving an illusion of depth with blur from the heat we're about to add. Create a new adjustment layer and name this Small Distortion. From the Effects and Preset tabs, add Heat Distortion. Set the Noise Pattern to Smoke, the Distortion Amount to 3, the Heat Amount and the Heat Bias to 0, the Noise Scale to 21, the Noise Speed to 1, and the Wind Direction to 88 degrees. Draw another mask around this, leaving the ground nearest the camera exposed, and use the feather to soften the edges down, just like what was done with the Blur layer. Now, create another adjustment layer, name this Large Distortion, and again add the Heat Distortion plugin. Set the Noise Pattern to Smoke, the Distortion Amount to 3, turn the Heat Amount and Heat Bias to 0, the Noise Scale to 156, the Noise Scale to 1, the Noise Speed to 3.17, and the Wind Direction to 88 degrees. Then copy and paste the mask from the Small Distortion layer to this layer. Now, pre-compose everything. A common thing with visual effects shots is if they're locked down on a tripod, it draws attention to the fact there are visual effects in it. A zoomed in shot on a telephoto lens is going to have a sort of jittery look to any movements done due to how compressed the image is, so that's what I'm going to replicate. 
Press R on your keyboard to bring up the rotation options. Alt click the stopwatch and type in the expression wiggle open bracket 1 comma 0.5 close bracket. Then press P to bring up the position. Alt click the stopwatch and type in the expression wiggle open bracket 3 comma 25 close bracket. Then use scale to zoom in so none of the black edges are visible. Now you can see the camera movement we've added. I also want a slight pan to follow the character, so I'm going to zoom in even more. Go up to layer and create a new null object, then lasso the pre-comp layer to it. Open up the position options on the null object and click the stopwatch to keyframe your start position and scrub to the end of the clip and readjust it to have moved along with the actor. Enable motion blur for the base layer and make sure to turn on motion blur for the whole composition. And like that, you have your heat mirage effect. Our next effect is going to be the blue tinted eyes. With your footage open in After Effects, go up to Layer and create a new solid. Pick a blue color and hit OK. Then set the blending mode to soft light. With the pen tool selected, draw a mask over just the actor's eyes on your blue solid layer and make sure it is set to Add. Press M on your keyboard to bring up the mask option, check the stopwatch, and then adjust the mask frame by frame to stay aligned with the actor's eyes. For a simple shot like this, you could track the eye and get away with pinning the mask to it, but due to the actor moving around and the constant focal shift, you'll have to do this manually. Do the same thing for the other eye, and once you have that done, press F on your keyboard to bring up the feather options and set it to 5. The problem is, as the camera goes out of focus, you can see the mask remains too crisp. To fix this, go to the clearest frame before it goes out of focus, click the stopwatch to enable keyframes, scrub forward to the point that is most out of focus, and increase the feathering until it blends. Scrub forward again to where the shot is back in focus, and keyframe the feathering back down to 5. Repeat this as needed, and make keyframe adjustments anywhere it doesn't seem to blend in well. Now, you have the blue eye effect from the movie as well. Now, for the final effect, the energy shield. With your footage open in After Effects, duplicate your base layer. This duplicated layer is going to be the foundation for the shield, so trim the in and out points to be when the shield will enter and when it will disappear. I have mine set for 2 seconds and 9 frames. We need just the actor separated from the background. You can use the pen tool and do this manually with keyframes, or you can use a roto brush tool. Double click the shield layer with the roto brush tool selected, roto out your actor for the duration of the clip, and make sure to freeze it when you're done. If you need a tutorial on how to use the roto brush, I've linked some good ones in the notes below. Go back into your original composition and duplicate this layer three times. Label them from top to bottom, shield 1, shield 2, shield 3, and shield 4. With them all selected, go up to Effect, Color Correction, and add a tint. On Shield 1, adjust the Amount to Tint to 10%. Then on Layer 2, 3, and 4, map the white to a light blue color, but make Shield 2 slightly wider than Shield 3 and 4. For Shield 2, set the Amount to Tint to 25%, Shield 3 to 50%, and Shield 4 to 81%. Then on Shield 4, go up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a Radial Blur. Set the blur amount to 19, keyframe the center point to start near the actor's chest and end on their face, and set the type to zoom. Then with all shield layers selected, press A to bring up the anchor point and readjust it so it's centered with the talon's face, and drag them back to align with the original footage. Then again, with all the shield layers selected, press T on your keyboard to bring up opacity options. Set shield 1 to 29%, shield 2 to 21%, Shield 3 to 40%, and Shield 4 to 10%. Make sure to keyframe it to fade in from 0 over the first 10 frames, and fade out to 0 over the last 10 frames. Now, go to the first frames of the shield layers, and press S to bring up the scale options while they're all selected, and press the stopwatch to enable keyframes. Scrub forward 10 frames, and adjust the scale so that they expand out stacking on top of each other as shown. With Shield 1 closest to the body, and Shield 4 being the furthest away. I'll show you what percentages I have them at, but most likely you'll need to eyeball this yourself depending on your shot setup. Then keyframe it with the scale selected on shield 3 and 4. You're going to keyframe it to slightly increase and decrease every couple of frames in between the second and third keyframe you've already made. Again, you will have to eyeball this yourself so it's not too subtle, but not too big. You can do the keyframes for one layer first, and then copy and paste them to the other layers. But make sure to offset them by a couple frames, because you don't want them bulging in unison with each other. 
You're going to do that same process on shield 2, 3, and 4, but this time on the opacity. Don't go all the way up to 100% and back down to 0%. Keep it within a 15 to 30% range, and when you're done, it should look like all the layers are flickering. Make sure to highlight all the keyframes you've done for your opacity and scale on every shield layer. Right click, go to keyframe assistant, and select easy ease. You can only highlight all the keyframes for a single layer at a time, so make sure you do it for one effect on each layer, and then go do it for the other effect on each layer. Make sure motion blur is enabled for each shield layer, and that motion blur is enabled for the composition. Then highlight all the shield layers, right click, and pre-compose. Title this pre-compose layer as Shield Grouping 1, then duplicate it and title that to Shield Grouping 2. Apply a radial blur to both of them. For Shield Grouping 1, keyframe the amount to go down from 0 at the first frame to 19 over the next 1 second and 5 frames. Highlight those keyframes and add Easy Ease. Then keyframe the center to pan across the actor's face for the duration of the clip and set the type to Zoom. Also, add Easy Ease to the amount of keyframes, then go up to Effect, Color Correction, and add an Exposure effect. Set the exposure to 1.11. Now, on Shield Grouping 2, you can copy and paste all the keyframes for the Radial Blur, just adjust the max for the amount to go up to 57 instead of 19. Add an Exposure effect to it as well, and set it to 3.1. Then go up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a Fast Box Blur. Set the blur radius to 48 and the iterations to 3. Also make sure the blur dimensions are set to horizontal and vertical. With the shield grouping 2 layer selected, hit T on your keyboard to bring up opacity options and set it to 25%. And that's it. Altogether, the effects look like this. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, and if there are any other effects you want me to recreate or break down, comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Now, cut to the outro.